to you. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Hannah. I appreciate it. Um, is there a way to turn off like all the notification things on here just so it's not as, um, that's just a little distracting uh, as people come in and come out. Um, I'm just going to see if I can do that real quick. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. <clears throat> I just turned off the post ch chat messages, and then at the end, if you want to open it up to questions, I'll turn right. it back. That's awesome. Okay. Um, very good. Well, thanks. Yeah, Hannah. Um, so like Hannah said, my name is Caleb Troxclair. Um, I uh, am a proud Havelina, class of 2004. Uh, it's hard to believe that that's almost 20 years ago. Um, I feel like it was just yesterday when I was there uh, in Kingsville uh, cheering on the Havelina uh, at, at games and, and walking back to my dorm at Martin Hall. Um, definitely had some great times there and uh, really love the opportunity to talk to you guys today. Um, like Hannah said, I'm an attorney and lobbyist um, in Austin, uh, but most importantly, uh, I'm a husband and father of three beautiful kids who are four, two, and one. Um, so we definitely have our, handful, our hands full right now. Um, but I grew up in southwest Texas in Uvalde County. Um, I went to a tiny school in uh, Uvalde called Canipa High School. Um, Canipa is a tiny little town few hundred people. Uh, I had um, 15 kids in my gradu graduating class. It was super, sm super small. Um, and I, I, nice thing about going to a small school like that is that you get to you get to play a lot of different sports, any sport you want, really, that they have. Um, whereas if you go to a larger school, as you know, you really only get to get to play one or two things. Um, so that was nice. Um, but after high school, I moved to Kingsville and started at A&M Kingsville. Um, and my plan was to just move back to Uvalde uh, after college and, and work and live there in Uvalde where I grew up. Um, but, you know, I really had a motivation problem my, my freshman year. Uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and I got in a little bit of trouble. Um, I really struggled with my class, was not showing up and doing my, doing my classwork like I was supposed to. And I almost actually flunked out of school. Um, so my sophomore year, um, I started getting, uh, started hearing more about politics and, and uh, civic engagement, and uh, I just decided to ask our, our local congressman at the time, it was a guy named Henry Bonilla. Um, and he was the congressman for Uvalde, um, and he, his office was in San Antonio. So I asked him if I could have the opportunity to do an internship in his office in San Antonio, and he said yes. Um, and uh, that that experience changed my life. Um, it, it was at a time when Congressman Bonilla had a, an opponent, and he was running for re-election. And so I got to work on his campaign a little bit. I also got to work in his district office, helping people um, like like y'all and like myself, uh, who had who had issues with the government, who needed help with, you know, taxes or Medicare or whatever it might have been, they would call the congressman's office, and we got to help them with those issues, and and um, got to really see, you know, and how um, a congressman's office can have, you know, a real positive impact on someone's life. Um, so it's not just about <clears throat> it's not just about passing bills. But um, there's also there's also a lot to do to help help people um, with everyday circumstances um, to maneuver different government agencies and things like that when they need help and that's very fulfilling. Um, so after that internship, <clears throat> I went back to Kingsville and uh, changed my major to science and I never looked back. Uh, I, I found something in politics and government service. Um, that, that became a real passion for me, um, and I really became interested in it. And uh, it was just neat that that I knew that 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 you know being in one of those roles, you don't have to be the elected official, but just being someone who works for that elected official and helps them help other people, you really can have a positive impact on people's lives. And so, um, so that's what I started caring about, um, and that's really when I'm caring about school. Um, so I found that focus and I found that passion for something 
um, and was able to turn that into a positive, a positive thing at school. Um, and along the way, once I had that focus and that passion, I really met some great professors and, and other people on campus uh, who really cared and wanted to help, wanted me, uh, wanted me to succeed and help me with that. Um, <clears throat> so after I graduated in 2004, I worked on a few political campaigns, uh, but really my goal was to work uh, to get a job at the state capitol in Austin. Um, but I, the problem was I didn't know anyone there. I didn't know anyone at the capitol. So I just printed out a bunch of resumes um, and started walking halls um, and just handing my resume out to anyone that would take it. Uh, and eventually, I ran ac across a girl named Leslie, Leslie Ritchie. Um, and she worked for a guy named State Representative Phil King. Leslie was uh, Representative King's chief of staff. And her dad happens to be uh, a, a really well-known javelina named Richard Ritchie. Um, I bet a lot of the guys on the football team probably know Mr. Ritchie. <clears throat> so Richard was uh, a quarterback in the 1970s for uh, Texas A&I, um, really turned the program around back in the 70s. Uh, they went undefeated um, for the three years that he was the starter there and won three national championships. And Mr. Ritchie's now in the College Football Hall of Fame. Um, and he's an attorney up in North Texas. Um, anyway, that was his daughter, Leslie, who just happened to be a chief of staff for a state representative that I had dropped my resume off um, in their office. And so she called me and asked me if I wanted to interview for a job to be a, a legislative aide in the office, even though I had no experience. Um, but the fact that I went to Texas A&M Kingsville and was a Havelina just really interested her. And so she called and we sat down and we really got to know each other really well. And we're still lifelong friends to this day. Bottom line is she hired me um, and uh, I got I got the job as, as the aide in, in Representative King's office um, and eventually stayed with him for several years, working my way up to be his chief of staff and then worked my way through law school um, while I was working for him. Uh, and then after I finished law school, I went on to be the chief of staff and legal counsel for the chairman of the Texas Railroad Commission and the Texas Railroad Commission used to have something to do with the railroads. It no longer does. Now it's the oil and gas regulatory body, the energy regulatory body in Texas. Um, and so I really got uh, a chance to work on oil and gas policy and, and uh, work with gas companies in Texas. And as you all know, that's a really you know important industry for our state, uh, not just because of the jobs it creates, um, but also because it helps the oil and gas revenues, um, helps fund public policy, public education, transportation, it helps fund the roads and many other things in Texas. So it was really great to get that experience. After a few years uh, at the Railroad Commission, I decided to, to leave and start my own law firm and lobby shop where that's that's what I'm doing now. I help, I help companies uh, who want to maneuver uh, different state agencies um, and, and help them with policy changes. Um, at the legislature and, and the different state agencies. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I think, um, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you guys really today. Um, you know, we can get into the weeds on, on how the legislative process works, um, and I'm happy to, happy to talk more about that. But really, I kind of wanted the rest of this, this evening to be about how you can get involved in your community uh, and in, in the political process for the government that you have around you and why that's so important. Um, so, you know, first I'd like to just start with a few real life examples of things that we're all impacted by in our daily lives. So your water bill or the rent that you pay, which is impacted by how high the property taxes are in your, in your community. Um, the quality of the schools that, that you go to or your kids will go to. These are all things that have profound effects on your daily life. Um, you know, the ability for you to have more money in your pocket because you're paying lower property taxes or paying lower bills, um, the ability to make a better life for yourself um, if, if the quality of the schools in your area is great. So these things are all are, are largely impacted by your, the city and the county and the school district governments in the area where you live. They're controlled by elected officials who make decisions on these issues. 
Um, and so if you want to make a difference in how those governments are being run and therefore create better outcomes in your life for yourself and your family and others in your community, you can do that. And that's what's so great about our system of government. Um, you know, you can, you can do anything from contacting the elected officials that serve on your school board or that serve on your city council and decide how high your taxes are um, to tell them how you feel about certain issues that they may be dealing with. Or if you really want to get involved, um, volunteering for their campaigns, or if you have someone who you feel like is not representing the values that you that you have, or the things that you want them to do, campaign against them. Um, and, and, and then also, you know, I think most importantly is voting. Um, all again, all all the all the decisions that are being made at these all these levels of government, especially at the local level have such a profound impact on your daily life. Um, a lot of times we don't, we don't even think about the local level of government because um, it's not on the news and it's not sexy. All we hear about is the presidential race and the Senate race and you know what's going on in Washington, D.C. When in actuality, the thing that you're being most impacted by is, is the decision that's being made in your city government or your county government or your school board. Um, <clears throat> So uh, a quick anecdote about my wife, Ellen. So Ellen um, actually served on the Austin City Council uh, here in Austin. Um, she was in her 20s. We were you know, somewhat newly married uh, and we were frustrated about property taxes. Um, we were, you know, the value, the, the home value is really high in Austin and it's becoming less and less affordable for just average Texans to live in Austin, and Ellen got upset about it, and she was not, you know, she was not a politician by any stretch of the imagination. She was just a frustrated person who was tired of paying higher property taxes. So when she was 28, she decided to run for city council and actually won. Um, she was the youngest woman ever elected to serve on Austin City Council at 29 years old when she was sworn in. Um, so. <clears throat> I say that to say, you don't have to think that you know you have to be like in your 40s or 50s to get involved in politics. Um, my wife did it when she was in her 20s and served for four years in, on Austin City Council and actually implemented the first city homestead exemption for property taxes ever, ever put in place. Um, so she had a real impact on the thing that she set out to do. Um, you know, many of the legislative statter, staffers at the Capitol that I work with on a daily basis are in their 20s. They're right out of college. Um, and, and so we talked a little bit about city, county, and school board. And I'd also say at the state level, you know, there's, there's also things that go on there that have huge impacts on our life. The public education system, the, the, you know, the curriculums and the funding for public education is set in Austin at the state capitol every other year um, when we have legislative session. The funding for, for colleges, the higher education system, is all set there. The criminal justice system in Texas. I mean, we all have seen and, and heard the, the stories that, that have been going on lately in the news. Um, I think we all agree that there are real reforms that should be talked about uh, in the criminal justice system. And, and a lot of that is done at the state level in Austin. Um, the you know, funding for roads and transportation, all things that, that happen at the state capitol. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, I, 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 know we've got the, I know we've got the chat function turned off, but um, is there like an ability to like raise hands or something on here, Hannah? I, I'd love to just see a show of hands from people if they can. Um, like, how many people know who their who their state representative or state senator is on this call? If you if you know, raise your hand. So we've got that's impressive that several people do. Um, you know, that's the one thing that I didn't even know until I was became a political science major at Kingsville. Who my local state rep was and who my who my state senator was. There they are men and women who live. There in Kingsville, your state representative in Kingsville is a guy named J.M. Lozano. He lives right down the road from you. He owns the Wingstop in Kingsville. 
JM is one of the nicest people you will ever meet. And if you wanted to go just pick up the phone and talk to JM or go sit down with him at Wingstop and have some wings, he would love to do that. Um, and I think once people realize that these elected officials aren't some, you know, big, big, bad, like boogeyman and that they're very approachable and they're just normal people like you and me, um, I think that's half the battle. So I would encourage you guys to just kind of get to know who your state rep is, who your state senator is, who your congressman is. Um, and again, don't just focus on the, on the, on the national stuff. Get, um, it's very dysfunctional uh, in Washington, D.C. right now. But the state and local politics in Texas are not nearly that dysfunctional. People actually can still have real conversations and, get, and, and, and accomplish real meaningful things for people. Um, so, um, with that, I, I, I'll just transition real quick to how you can get involved. Um, number one, right now, uh, hopefully if you are registered to vote, go vote. It's election season right now. The, the election is on Tuesday. Uh, election day is Tuesday, a week from today. We have four more days of early voting. So if you haven't early voted, go do that right now, um, or go vote on Tuesday. Um, secondly, just reach out to your, your elected officials, get to know them, tell them what you care about. Um, if you don't know who they are, you can go to uh, just Google who represents me on, on your computer and it, it'll pull up a website that you can plug your address in and you can find out who your state representative is, who your state senator, who your congressman is, what their phone numbers and all that, and you can reach out to them. Um, get to know what they stand for. And if you don't like what they stand for, then work to change their mind or get someone else elected. Um, we truly have an amazing form of government um, that allows you and I, if we see things that we don't like, we have the ability to change them. Um, and, and the crazy thing is, you'd be amazed at how few people actually get involved and get engaged to try to make those changes. And because so few people do get engaged, that means if you decide to, you're going to have an outsized influence on that person, on that on that representative, or on that issue that you decide that you want to work on. Um, so uh, that that's everything in a nutshell I want to talk about. Just in closing, I'd say you know the main takeaways uh, would be one, get involved, look for internships, communicate with your elected officials on issues you care about, volunteer on their campaigns, and go vote. Uh, number two, never be shy to ask for help from people who are doing something you're interested in. Um, had I had I been too shy to ask that congressman for an internship, I never would have gotten it. Um, and so you just have to have to be willing to ask. People love to help other people out, especially when it's on things that they're passionate about or good at. So find a mentor, find that person who is willing to help to help you. Um, and the last thing I'd say is never count yourself out. It doesn't matter how badly you're doing at school, like I found myself failing my freshman year, uh, or what you're going through personally. You guys at the athletic department are so lucky. Um, you athletes are so lucky. You have people there in the athletic department and in your, your coaches um, and the other support staff that love you and are there to support you, you're given tools that, you know, 95% of people your age do not have access to. Um, you're being given tools to succeed right now at this point in your life. And you should take advantage of those tools while you, while you can, while you're there in Kingsville and have the opportunities that you, you've been given. Um, those tools are invaluable and they can help you get involved um, in ways that you never thought possible. Um, so that's, I think that's, that's really all I wanted to share. Um, I know I didn't get much into how the government works, but I, I wanted it to be more about why you should get engaged and, and how you can do that. So um, happy, to, happy to answer questions if anybody has any questions um, next. So yeah, just let me know. All right. Thank you so much. I just turned on the chat message. So if anybody has any questions, please uh, ask away. Um.
If he would have told, if he would have told you know me what, what I would have done. Uh, I, you know, I probably, I, there's no, there's no telling what I would have done. I probably would have gone back to Uvalde and been, been working in Uvalde. Um, uh, I would say that, um, I don't think there are many, there are many people out there who meet young people that want to make a difference who won't give them an opportunity. So I would say always, always ask, don't just worry about what they're going to say because chances are they're going to say yes. Um, the other, the other question, what is, what is the age to run for a school board position or be a part of a school board? Um, I don't think there's an age limit for school board. Um, there are some statutory age limits for other positions, but I believe, I think you have to be like voting age. So I think you have to be like 18 to serve on a school board. Um, so anyone can, anyone, anybody on this call, I'm sure would qualify and, and would be able to, to uh, run to be on a school board. And I'd also say, um, you know, if any of you have other questions or want to reach out and want to talk more about getting involved in whether it's school board or getting involved at the Capitol, if somebody wants to try and find an internship at the Texas State Capitol here in Austin and is interested in that or just wants to talk about really anything, law school, um, anything else like that, um, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to, to, you know, help with that. So. I'll give my contact information to Hannah. Actually, she has my contact information, but um, I can make sure that she shares that with everybody. Um, to, to just feel free, I, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to be a resource for you guys. Um, and I'll I'll chat uh, here. I'll put my email address in the chat box here so you can reach out if you need to. So, and and last thing I'd say. Uh, you know, I know I know a lot of you guys are in quarantine right now um, because of COVID, um, and and so now's really you know I would take this opportunity to start thinking about you know what is your what is your purpose where are you headed after after school, you got you got some downtime on your hands right now be thinking about that, um, reach out, I'm happy to chat, um, you know COVID something else that a lot of people it's very politicized right now. Um, but if you're not happy with the quarantine or you think they're not doing enough quarantining or you think they're doing too much, again, those are all decisions that are being made by elected officials. Um, and those are, you know, those are things that are impacting your lives in real time right now. And so if you feel like you're frustrated about that, that situation one way or the other, that's something that you can let people know about and, and make a difference by doing that. I think Ruby may have just shared. Yeah, she just shared the who represents me link. Thanks, Ruby. I appreciate that. So, yeah, you can click on that link there and uh, find out who your state rep or your state senator is and, and uh, get involved that way. <clears throat> Anybody else have any any question? Any other questions before we before we sign off? All right. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. Caleb, thank you so much for giving us some of your time this evening. Great talk. Really appreciate you. Love the words of wisdom you provided to all of our student athletes. Your why, Havilland and Nation, is a great place to be a part of. So thank you again so much. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Go, Avalina. Y'all take care. All right. Everybody have a good night.